Hello and welcome to this week's set of short videos on digital product development. Today we're going to talk through what is the Internet of Things, what are network requirements, what are network industry standards and the related challenges of interoperability. This will close our exploration of networks for this course. But first, let's go down in the applied lab to meet Elvis, we will discuss our prototype of an internet-connected wheelchair to illustrate some network technologies. Hey, Elvis, how are you hey, doing? Jackie. Yeah, I'm doing okay. How about you? Good, good. Well, I, I'm seeing the, the, the wheelchair. Uh, I was thinking for the, the networking uh, module of our bachelor's uh, students. That would be a perfect example. Yeah, of course. I mean, this is something that we developed in our master course. Oh yeah, the prototyping connected product. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. And it shows very clearly all of these networked uh, technologies in one prototype, yeah. which is our wheelchair prototype. Plenty of sensors. Yes. I mean, uh, I don't know if this is your first time seeing a sensor, but for example, we have uh, two to three types of different sensors here to detect all kinds of different uh, uh, physical characteristics. Yeah, so yeah. these are to capture the, the pressure, I guess? Yes, uh, these are what call, we call FSRs and they detect force on each of these. And uh, as you can see, we have an array of these, right? We have two for the armrests, we have uh, seven for our, our seat, and we have five for our backrest, right? Okay. Now, these are connected uh, to our main computer, and we will go over this again, but we just want to show our other sensor that we have here on our wheel, and what we call an IMU. An IMU is to detect orientation and acceleration, um, and we use this to get data on our movement. All right. Now that we've gone over the two main sensors that we use, we need to talk about how they're connected. Um, and also a bit about how sensors work. So a sensor will take a physical characteristic of the world and convert that into an electrical signal. And by analyzing this electrical signal, uh, we can get data about the world around us, right? So we have pressure and we have orientation. And then these have to be collected somehow. And here is where we have our processing uh, chips. So, we can start with the wheel here. You can come a bit closer and we can discuss this. I am, an IMU is essentially a sensor that detects uh, acceleration and orientation. And this is what we use to detect our movements, such as speed and how many rotations uh, right. the wheel is going. Uh, I guess now we have to discuss about what gets all this together. Yeah, and especially the networking part. Yeah. The, the yeah. networking part, indeed. So. To get all of this data, we're going to need some devices to record the data. So what we can see here is all of the connections. These cables are uh, the electrical signals that come from our FSRs. And these are all connected through our circuit to one of our main microprocessors. And this is our Arduino. You might have seen it before. It's, an, it's a simple chip that will get this data uh, parse it, that is to write, convert it into a form that we want to send it to another device or visualization, and then sends this through one of our first connections, which is USB. Uh, US so USB is going to be a, a, a serial communication, yes. Huh? yes, it's what we might call a serial port, or it's a connection which is uh, standard in a lot of uh, devices and it sends all your data in uh, a stream to your other device so from our uh, uh, so from the usb cable we go to the raspberry pi the raspberry pi indeed and the raspberry pi is our more complex uh, microprocessor here it is uh, actually a full computer yeah so that's the difference between the arduino which is just a microcontroller. Yes, um, uh, uh, the Raspberry Pi has many more features and can handle uh, uh, more complex tasks 
Uh, it also has better networking technologies and more complex stacks. Okay, so for the Raspberry Pi, um, what we have, so for the Raspberry Pi, you can actually notice that no other sensor is connected to it by cables. This is because the Raspberry Pi is our main wireless hub. We are going to use two main wireless technologies in our prototype. The first of one, which you might have heard of, is Bluetooth. Now, Bluetooth is a wireless technology, and you might have used it before with your headphones or uh, RC cars or your phones. And it essentially sends data through this network. Uh, and this is how we're getting the data from our MU. This is a little Bluetooth chip. Now, the other networking technology... Wait, 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 wait. So, so Bluetooth is sending to the Raspberry Pi? Yes. Right? So, as my phone would send to, to your head to my headphones. To All listen. Right. I exactly. See. I see. Now, um, we have our Raspberry Pi also has another networking technology because it's actually connected to Wi-Fi. It's connected to the Internet. <laughs> Okay, so here we have, uh, you mentioned, so the sensors send uh, to the Arduino, then the Arduino via a USB, so serial connection to the Raspberry Pi, exactly. and we have also another microcontroller on the wheel, yes. sending via Bluetooth this time wirelessly to the Raspberry Pi. As well. It aggregates all that and sends uh, to the clouds. Exactly. I'm missing some here, something here. So, so how the so so these are local physical technologies yes. uh, how does it reach the internet yeah i mean the internet it is built on a stack of networking technologies from the physical to software based right? okay and when we have what we call protocols and it's through these protocols that we can communicate with the internet and in this case specifically we're going to use http Oh yeah, HTTP for the, the protocol behind the internet. Exactly, and we also use MQTT. And so MQTT, what for? MQTT, it's for the Internet of Things. All right. Yes, so we use these the services and protocols to send data to the cloud. Ah, uh, you get me interesting. Can we look at the visu data visualization then? Sure, let's uh, see. Let's jump into that. So this is how the data looks like. We have the rotation count here on the top right corner. And we can see that as I'm going in the corridor, the, the this count is increasing, turning around, not much happening, and then it's increasing again. This value is coming from the IMU, the inertial motion unit. This is also the case for, for the accelerometer. So here we see that it starts moving a little bit as I'm sitting in the wheelchair. And then as soon as I propel myself, um, it starts picking on the x-axis. I'm going forwards uh, with a strong acceleration here, here again. And we have, as I'm going around the, the pole, uh, a few peaks on the on the y and z axis it is never flat here even on the y and z axis because the sensor is not completely vertical and not completely at the center of the wheel so here we can see clearly that i'm turning around and then uh, same process again and then we have the the fsrs the pressure sensors with the backrest distribution 
and the seed distribution. So uh, uh, a stronger force when I'm sitting at the beginning, but also nothing on the on the backrest. Then I, I'm I'm lying a little bit on the back, and then as I'm uh, propelling myself, we can see that this distribution we could almost detect. Uh, uh, the the propelling and 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 counting the rotation even with the pressure sensors and stronger forces here as I'm starting going in a in a straighter line and then uh, slowing down not actually propelling myself just letting it go turning around so it's a little bit chaotic here S same process here. And then as I stop, I'm doing a, a few a few uh, movements in the wheelchair. I'm lying uh, in front, so nothing on the on the backrest for a moment. I'm also going uh, on the on the left side, lying on the left side, and then lying on, on the right side. So that gives you an idea of how the data uh, of those sensors looks like. <laughs>